we're going to look at Janome's 7034D serger. This serger is a four thread serger and has a differential feed. In this video, we'll be covering all the different parts and components of the serger and also going over how to thread the serger using the tie off method and from scratch. First off, you will notice that on the front of the machine, there are four color coded dials. One of the great features of this machine is that everything is color coded so you can easily follow the trail of which thread is doing what in your serger. These dials allow you to adjust each thread's tension so that you get exactly the right surge edge. On the top of the machine, there is a black dial and this dial allows you to change the pressure of your pressure foot. This is really great for when you're using thin or really thick fabrics. You can really customize how your serger will treat those fabrics. In the needle area of the serger, you will see that there are two separate needles. These are labeled up here beside a screw left and right. This screw is what you will use to change out your needles. This is your presser foot. I'm going to turn the machine slightly. You will notice that there is a lever at the back, a black lever, and when you raise the lever, it will raise your presser foot. Likewise, if you lower it, it will lower the pressure foot. A great feature about this is we can remove our presser foot. Simply clicking, pushing in this button at the back will release the foot and you can move it out of the way. This allows us to see two different sets of feed dogs. The rear feed dog will always move at the same rate. And the front feed dogs you can customize to have a different rate. This is where we get into the differential feed of the machine. So we can customize how our edge of our surge strip will look. Often we change the differential feed to allow for uh, gathering or to make sure that our surge is as flat as we would like it. You can simply reinstall the presser foot by aligning it back up, lowering your presser foot lever, and then, can you see this? I'm going to press the button on the back and it will pop back into place. down on the side of the machine there is a hand dial and you'll notice that there is an arrow on the side. You always want to turn the dial towards the front of the machine. This makes sure that your threads do not get gummed up. We also have the on off switch and the place where you'll plug in your power cord and foot pedal. On the back of the machine you will see our spool stand with our four spool pins. Attach to these are spool cones th or thread cones and this helps keep our cones of thread on our machine. Also we have a thread guide that extends well beyond the top of the machine. Before we open up the front of the machine so I can show you all the different loopers and how to thread it, I just wanted to show you what is included in with your serger. You will be provided with a pair of tweezers and you will really need these when you thread your machine. Then we have two different screwdrivers and a set of replacement needles. Also included in your machine, you will find a foot pedal that is attached to a cord. This cord also is doubled up with your power cord that you will plug into the wall. And this goes into the side of the machine where I showed you earlier. Next up, I'm going to show you how to get into the front of your machine. There are two separate panels that open to allow you access to, to thread your machine and um, change a few settings. So first off, on the right hand side, this panel slides to the right and then you flip it open. 
It is spring loaded, so when you close it again, it will go back into place. Then on the left hand side, this compartment opens up as well and it simply pulls. When you open up your serger, you will see that there are two separate diagrams. This diagram here shows you the thread path for threading your machine. It also has really important information where it is numbered here, one, two, three, four. This is the order that you want to thread your serger. Every serger is a little bit different, but this one has you threading it from right until left. You need to follow the pattern or the threads end up mixed up a little bit and it will affect how your search Here is ends. located a diagram that also is kind of like a roadmap on what your surge edge will look like and which part of the machine is responsible for each section. It is also color coded so that you can follow that thread all the way through. So if looking here, the green thread is looser than you would like, then you can follow the green path and know that this knob here, you can adjust to increase the tension. Now we will look at all the different components inside of here and what they are. This red thread attached to this part is our upper looper. Then if I move my handle forward, you'll notice another one comes out with a green here. This is our lower looper. Over here, you will see a little hook type thing that goes up and down. That is our upper knife and it works in with this stationary knife here, which is our lower knife. And these two trim our fabric as we try to serge them. Next up, we will look at our serge sec selector and our rolled hem selector. This selector we use when we want a general serged hem and our rolled hem is a really cool stitch that kind of curls the edge of your fabric underneath and finishes it with a really nice stitch. We're going to look at how to switch from the S position to the R position. To do this, we're going to press in this knob on the left and move our switch forward. This takes a little bit of pressure to get it to deploy. So give it a good push and then move it to the R position and release and it will move everything back into place. If we wanted to do an edge that didn't and we didn't want to cut it, we can remove or disengage our cutting blade. Simply this knob here, you press it in and swing it down. And then our blade is out of the way. To put it back, just do the same thing in reverse. Watch your fingers because the blade is sharp. Now we're gonna look at threading your machine using the tie off method. This method is great for when you need a quick change and you don't really wanna go through uh, threading the whole machine. Our sergers all come pre uh, threaded for you so that you can see for yourself exactly where the threads go and it also allows you to start off by tying off. This method is great when your machine is stitching properly but when things aren't stitching properly it's often better to just completely uh, take out all the threads and start from scratch. You should be able to loosen the knot and then start out. You would probably add in the thread um, all one color, but I'm going to continue on using the four different colors thread that came with the machine so that we know exactly what's going on. It is a great learning tool to continue to use the four different thread colors or just a collection of thread colors so that you can see and understand how your serger is working. To tie off, you simply Add a cone of thread to your serger, and then you take the ends and you tie them together. I do this, I like to do a double knot so that it's nice and secure because the last thing you want is for it to come untied in the middle of putting your new thread through. Once that's done, I 
snip off some of the ends. I'm going to join the rest of the threads and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to. I now have all my threads tied off and I'm ready to pull my threads through the machine. The one thing that you want to do and make sure you do before you pull through is to make sure your, your presser foot is up. This relieves the tension off the disc and it will help you pull your threads through easier. I like to pull through one thread at a time to make sure that I am not losing a thread along the way. I'm going to start with our green thread, which is in this far left. And I'm going to just grab it on the side of the looper. And then hopefully, sometimes you need to give it a little hand dial, a little pull. And it gets caught around the tension disc a little bit, but make sure your thread goes back into the tension disc all the way. Just helping it along a little bit through the tension disc. And then our knot is through. Next, I'm going to pull the upper looper red thread through. And it's also going to get a little stuck around the tension disc. Make sure your thread goes back into the tension disc. And I'm going to pull it all the way through. And give it a little cut. Next, we are going to do the two top needles. Now, with the needles, our knots will not make it through the eye of the needle. So we need to cut them before we get to the needle. But let's start with the blue and pull it through. And then we simply snip the knot. And we're gonna snip it off completely so that the other thread can go through. And then we're gonna pull the orange through and give it a snip and we're ready to re-thread those needles. I have unthreaded the machine completely and now I'm going to teach you how to thread it from scratch. We have the four different threads on top and they come in through a slot up here. This is usually good enough, but if you're finding your thread is whipping out of your slot while you're surging, you can simply unthread and wrap it around and come in through the back and pull it through the hole. That will allow you, when it comes through the hole, it won't allow it to slip out anymore. But for now, we're just going to use the slot on the top. We're gonna follow the diagram for uh, threading our machine, which has us going from right to left. So you will notice on this first step of our threading, we have these two dots and they're color coded, or sorry, two holes. So this is our first stop of the path and you're going to go through the left hole first and then from top to bottom and then you're going to go through the right hole, top to bottom. Always going down with the threads through the holes and it'll wrap around this metal piece here. Next on our thread path, is, we have two guides. The right guide is for the green pathway. The left guide is for the red pathway. So you're gonna slip your thread in there and then wrap it around your tension disc. Now you're going to wanna to give it a little bit of a tug so it sits in your tension disc and make sure that your Press her foot is up while you're threading your machine. 
Next, there is this hook here, and you're going to set the thread over top of that. Once you get down to the bottom, everything is color coded, and you'll notice that there is a green dot here, a green piece of paint here, a green piece of paint here. So those are our next three stops. So we're going to go in this loop oh, from the right to the left, and it'll sit right in there. And then you're going to go in this, the right one first, and then, and it's kind of where the, you can see it. So it's more on the right here, and then through the next one that's on the left. If it's too tight in there, feel free to use your tweezers. Next up on our threading pathway is a little hook right in here. It's just like this hook here where you can just slide the thread in to one side and it'll pop right in. So it's right under here. You can, sometimes you can't see it right away because of where your hand wheel is turned. So give it a little turn until it pops up into view. There you go, right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass the thread through the machine to the other side um, tweezers are definitely helpful in here and you can get in super close with your head and then it's easier. And now for this one, I like to pretend I'm like flossing my teeth. I wrap the thread around my fingers a bit and then I can easily pop it up in to that hook and you'll hear it pop and then you're in there. And now we're going to swing over to the other side. I'm going to wheel the needle forward and you can see that really nicely right there is that piece of tape. Um, right there is indicating that that is our next stop on our threading pathway. To make it a little bit easier, give it a little snip because a nice clean cut on your thread is going to make everything easier to thread. So we're going to take it and I'm going to put it in my tweezers and put it right through the hole and it's in there now. And then it needs to be passed back to the other side of the machine. So I'm going to start it going back through and then I'm going to turn the machine back. Lots of moving. And then I can easily grab it underneath to the other side. And now the big thing here is to make sure I'm going to wheel my hand wheel forward and you can see our lower looper pop back out is make sure that it hasn't wrapped itself around the looper while you're threading it. And then we're going to take it and put it through the last hole, which is right here, sorry, right here on the end. And you're going to have to find the sweet spot for threading it because everything moves together. So as I move that, um, it's going back a bit, but it clears behind it so that I can pass the thread through and then I can bring my tweezers from the back of my machine and grab it. And that is your lower looper all threaded and ready to go. The next step is a little bit tricky, but you'll just see a little bit of green right here. And so that is our next stop for our thread. And it is definitely a little bit tricky to get in there. And I suggest using your tweezers for sure and I'm going to pass the thread over through to the other side. And then I can use the tweezers to help me get it into the little hook that's there. The next step is also kind of tricky to see, but I watch right here, this piece here. When I move my dial, it moves away and then it moves back. And that is... There is a little hole, I can't get a great angle on it for you, but there is a little hole that you're going to pass the thread back through. And tweezers really help in this section. And I've gotten it through the hole. Now I'm going to pass that thread to the other side. When I move my dial forward, my 
section appears again, my looper appears again, and I can grab my thread. It's a little finicky, but you can get it. It's just, you gotta watch for it coming through. And so once you have it back to the front, to the other side, you'll be able to thread it through the last stop. And I promise you, the green is the trickiest. And after this one, everything else is a piece of cake. So you wanna make sure that it's not wrapped around the top of the looper. And then there is a hole right on the end that you need to get your thread through and just fiddle around with your dial to find the best spot that makes it the easiest for you to clear it through that path and then it is through and it can go towards the back of the machine next up is our red thread path so we're going to start once again, from the top, it's gonna to go through that first hole. You're gonna wrap it around and go back through the top and pull your thread down. And we learned in the first step that there are two things here, two guides, and you're going to put it through the left guide around this tension disc and make sure we set it in our tension disc. And then there's a hook here. And this is where I promised you it would get much easier. Here there are only one, two, and then up through this little slot here and out the hole here. So there's only three, well, four steps. There's the first guide with the red dot here. Then this guide is painted red. And then finally, over this little piece of wire on our upper looper. Then we are able to thread it through the hole which is right here. One thing to watch out for when you're threading your machine is that none of your threads down here get hung up on other guides, making sure that they're all in the right places and not anywhere else. So I've just passed that thread to the back of the machine. That by far is the trickiest part. We can close up the front of our machine now and focus on our needle threading. So this will go a lot quicker. Once again, I'm gonna do the blue one because it's we're threading from right to left. We're gonna go down through the top, wrap it around and go down through the top again. And then we're going to go around the blue dial and make sure it's sitting in our tension disc. And then there's this hook here that it goes around. After our thread goes through the tension dials and through this hook, there's this hook that it goes over. It gets hooked over that. There, we're going to use the right guide to put our thread in. And then there's a guide in front of our needle bar. The next thing to happen is to put, to thread it through the needle. Sometimes I use the tweezers a lot. Another great trick is if you're having trouble getting the thread to go in is give it a nice clean snip because even a little bit of fray, the, the eyes on the needles are always a little bit tricky. There we go. And you can see why using the tie off method is so intriguing and easy compared to threading it from scratch. But when you're running into problems with your serger, you definitely want to thread it from scratch. Last but not least, we're going to thread the orange. So it's over the thread guide. And then as always, we go in from the top on the left 
and then back into the one on the right. Every time. Around our tension disc and make sure that it's in place. Then we come over the hook up here and then there's a guide to the left, the guide in front of the needle bar, and then through the needle on the left. And there we go. Now we're going to pass all the threads to the right hand side of the needle and under if you can see it here there's a little part of your presser foot and that's your machine threaded from scratch and there you go that is an overview of the Janome 7034D and a brief tutorial on how to thread your machine Please follow along on the Janome Life YouTube channel because we will have more and more videos on how to use the, this serger um, and how to use other features on this serger, as well as other, many of our other popular machines. There will be videos to see as well. Thank you for tuning in.